Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to the 10th video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own scary survival horror game in Unity. In this tutorial we'll be covering attempting to open the door but it's locked, a new camera system for atmosphere and we'll turn the player on and off so we can integrate that new camera. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment or drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel and you'll also find the scripts and assets to this series there too along with plenty of other things, and also now join as a free member. And now, on with the tutorial. So last time, if you remember, we had the door set up, and we worked with our ray cast, so we can basically say, if we close the door, we can open it. So what happens if we do indeed press the E key? Well, something has to happen. So that's what we're going to do in this tutorial. We're going to make it so as we can essentially try and open this door, uh, but it's going to be locked, because this is really the way we came in and out of the level. Again, if you've played the demons inside, which was linked in the first tutorial, you'll uh, you'll know exactly what I mean. And if you haven't played it yet, I would implore you to go back to that first tutorial, go to the pinned comment, go and play the demons inside, so you can get a good feel of how this game is going to turn out. So, how exactly do we do this? Well, firstly, let's set up a new camera. We want the camera to be near this left metal door, and we want it to kind of pan upwards for atmosphere. So for now, what I'm going to do is right-click on left metal door, Go down to camera and then I'm going to call this metal door cam and I'm going to just uncouple it so it's no longer a child object of left metal door it's its own independent object I'm now going to bring it out bring it down to the ground round about there let's turn it on the Y and then I want to turn it on the X so it kind of looks up I want it basically looking at the doors to say it's locked. So if we were to press play now, this camera should be our default camera rather than our player camera. It doesn't mean our player can't move around, it just means that this camera will be the one that renders. So this is what it should look like when it says we can't open the door. So we've got that in place now. So how do we make it so the script actually does what we need it to? Well, if we go to left metal door, scroll down, and go to the metal door script. Let's open that up in Visual Studio. So we now need to add a couple of variables to determine a couple of things within here. We need to establish if we can open the door, because if we can, we want to be able to press the E key. If we can't, we don't want to be able to do anything. We also need to define the player object and this new camera that we've set up. So let's start by declaring those var uh, variables. So firstly, serialized field. And the first is going to be a bool because we want it to be true or false, just like we have with the UI active just here. Uh, and we'll call this can open, i.e. can we actually open this door or not? The next variable is going to be the player. So once again, serialized field. We'll have this as a game object and we'll call it the player semicolon. And the final variable is again going to be a uh, serialized field game object, but rather than the door, like it's predicted we want, it's going to be the cam. So it's going to be that new camera. Okay, so what do we do now? Well, if we look here, if our player distance is less than five and we can say open door, then theoretically we can open that door. So we now need to say can open equals true. But it also means that the false would be a case of if we can't open that door, then we'll say can open equals false. And it'd be the same on mouse exit. So can open equals false. Semicolon to close that line off. So now we've set our bool variable in the correct places. We now need to say, well, OK, so what happens if we do try and open it? Well, we need to have the update method in place. So down here, we'll type void update, and it doesn't need to be private, so that's fine. We can remove that word. So in the update method, we need to detect if can open is true or not. So we say can, helps if we do the if statement, doesn't it? So if can open equals, and that's a double equals, true, then we do the following. This is where we start nesting the if statements. And what do I mean by nesting? Well, it means we place another if statement below because it then detects if we can say 
we're pressing the E key. We could, in theory, say if can open is true and key code is down uh, for letter E, we, we could theoretically do that. Uh, and we might end up doing it. I just want to show you different ways of doing things because you'll find nesting occurs quite a lot when coding. So what do we do here? Well, we have to say if, and in brackets, input dot get key down, and in brackets, key code dot e. Then close bracket, close bracket, open curly bracket. Now, we're not going to type anything in this if statement just yet because we actually need to write a coroutine. And that coroutine is going to be able to control what happens within this event. So think of this as, like I say, an event. So if we go to our door and press E, then an event happens, i.e. that event being trying to open the door. And the great thing about this is because of the way we're creating this script, we can actually reuse this script on any door and we can even change what happens within the event. So the event is all going to be inside the coroutine. So if you scroll to the bottom after our void on mouse exit, we need to say I enumerator. I can call this anything, but let's make it something logical. Let's have it as opening door. Open close bracket, open curly bracket. And at the moment, you'll see that it is underlined in red, but that will be amended as we type this event out. So the first thing that we want to do when we press the E key is we want our new camera to be the camera that gets rendered. So the cam dot set active and in brackets true. The immediate next thing we need to do is turn the player off. We can't leave the player on because effectively the player will still be able to move around the scene even when we're having this static camera staring at the door on. So we need to make sure that we say the player dot set active in brackets false. So that st it still means our player is there. It just means it's currently inactive in the scene. So the obvious thing to do would be after a couple of seconds, and we'll end up displaying a message on screen in the next tutorial. But after a couple of seconds, we then do the complete inverse of this. We turn the player back on and turn the other camera off. So for now, we will say uh, yield return new wait for seconds. And I'm going to put three for now, but we may change this later on. It depends what our text will say on screen a little later on in this series. So after three seconds, we then need to do the complete opposite of what we've just done here, like I said. So we say the player dot set active is true. So we turn the player back on. We then need to turn the camera off. So the cam dot set active false semicolon. So the final thing to do in this script is to actually trigger that coroutine or that event. So remember when we did this, if input dot get key down key code E. Well, in that if statement, we simply put starting that coroutine. So start co routine and in brackets, the name of the coroutine you've just written. In this case, opening door, open close bracket, close bracket, semicolon, and save that script. So let's quickly go over what is happening here because this script has now been expanded quite a lot since we just created the on mouse over and on mouse exit. So if our player is looking at the door and we are within range, then can open is set as true. And if can open is set as true, then this bit becomes active. So if can open is true and then we press key code E, which is the letter E on our keyboard, then we start the coroutine, which is opening door, which then sets the camera as on, sets the player as off, waits for three seconds while we do more of the event, then it turns the player back on and turns the camera off. So let's head back into Unity. And on the left metal door, scroll down, you'll see a couple of other things right here. So the player and the cam. So let's set metal door cam as the cam, and then we'll set player capsule right here. So now what should happen is if we press play, we should be able to go over to the door and obviously the raycast and everything will still work as normal because we haven't changed anything to do with the raycast. But what would help actually is if we turned the metal door cam off. So before we go any further, let's take metal door cam up here, untick and then press play. 
we don't want that camera to be active and on all the time. So we just basically turn it off because our script now controls when that camera comes on and when it turns off. So let's head over here to our door. And yep, Raycast still works, which is excellent. So if we get close to our door, we could open it. And there we go. There is our little, our little scene. There we go. Let's try again. Perfect. So if you could imagine some text there saying the door is closed or locked or something like that. So that's a nice little simple event. And next tutorial, what we'll do is we're going to expand that event a little bit more. We're going to add some text on the screen to say the door is locked. Uh, and we'll add some sound effects to that door as well, uh, just to you know give it a bit more atmosphere and integration. And we should probably add a bit of background ambience to this game as well, just to make it sound and feel a little bit more like a game than what it currently is now, because it's a little bit dull, but we'll sort that out in the next tutorial. So remember to subscribe and click on that notification bell and you can stay up to date with every tutorial that I do upload to this series because there is still a lot to learn and I will see you next time.